Hello everyone, welcome back to Pony Island. This is for uh, game hacking over the summer. This is Professor Johnson again. Uh, last summer I um, went through uh, with the class on creating a TCP proxy. Um, and we may need to do that again because this summer I'm going to try and find different solutions than I did last summer. Uh, which means last summer I went through the whole process of making a proxy and we didn't do any injection at all. So uh, what I ended up doing is just using Wireshark because all I needed was feedback from the game client and the game server in order to figure out what was happening in the game. And that alone was enough to lead me to solutions. Uh, so I didn't use a proxy last summer. Maybe I'll use it this summer. But last summer I did record a video on using Wireshark uh, instead of creating a TCP proxy uh, just to see what's going on in the game and maybe that'll be useful for you too. Uh, but the quality wasn't exactly there, so I'm going to re-record it a little bit so that uh, it's easier for you students to, um, to to follow along. So what I've got running here is uh, is Wireshark. I do have my game client up. Um, I have Wireshark currently filtered down to only grab uh, packets that are sent either to or from the game server or to or from the master server. And um, we I don't have any parsing or anything. All I've got are the basic columns up here with the source destination protocol and all of that. But I do have a custom column here uh, to print that uh, the data, uh, the, the TCP payload, um, because that is what is happening in the game. That's what's actually being sent, right? The rest of it's all just overhead and headers and all that kind of stuff. So um, let's get into the game client. And then I'm going to leave Wireshark running in the background so that we can we can see in real time what's happening in the game. So. Uh, it's running right now for our, our trace. Uh, here's the client. I'm going to move the client over here so that you can see the data. Come. So you're going to start seeing data as soon as I, I attempt to log in here because that is going to be a handshake with the master server to log me in and then with the game server to actually get me in the game. So there's no data being sent so far. So just clicking the pay, play game button there, we know to be entirely handled on the client side, which makes sense, but just pointing that out. Now, if we hit connect here and we don't see anything, then that means that authentication would also be a client side thing, which obviously shouldn't be. So, and join. And there we go. So there's our handshake, and now we're in the game, and we see uh, packets being sent back and forth. But we're sitting here, we're standing still, and what we can see uh, <clears throat> essentially are two things. We have number one, a data string that starts with 6D76, and then we have CC43. 12C7004, and then we have a, uh, a set of null bytes being sent back. So we have the, the quadruple zeros there. Now, something interesting happens now that we can inspect this, right? What exactly is this data that's being sent back? Well, the triple zeros is probably just an acknowledgement of some kind. And if I go back to Wireshark, what is the direction of travel there? Uh, so those are being, I'm going to actually stop it here so that we'll restart it here in just a second so if we look at those null bytes what we have here is being sent from the uh, ip and i'm i'm going to blur this out up on youtube so you may not be able to see it not that these are the ips that we're actually going to be using for the class because uh, i'm going to stand up some new servers for that but what we have is packets being sent from the source which is our game server to our client server or sorry to our not client server to our client so yeah, the quadruple zeros here is is probably some kind of an acknowledgement coming from the game server. The 6D76 prefixed uh, data stream is coming from our client to the game server. So that's interesting, right? So we have something being sent to the game server on a fairly regular basis, right? These would be known as ticks in the game. So a tick is basically a check-in with the client um, and uh, it's sending something to the game server. The game server is sending back, yep, I hear you, I see you. We're, we're good to go. So let's restart this. And now get back in the game. Now, I just moved the camera a little bit. And what's interesting is you will notice that that string, 6D76 string, actually changes as I move the camera. The more I move it, the more it changes. But not all of it. We still have 6D76CC43. 12C7004. It looks like only part of it is changing as we move the camera around. I'm 
standing completely in place here. Oh, look at that. When we look straight at the ground, we get a bunch of zeros in that string as well. Looks like we get one. Uh, I got five zeros and then 4D7500 zero, zero there. Now, if we look straight up, what happens? Straight up here, uh, back to zero. So, but here we have uh, five zeros and then A74B. There was at some point there, it looked like, yeah, there we go. Look at that. We got a long string of zeros there at the end. But it's just part of it that's changing. But what if we move around a little bit? Uh, we have another change. If I don't move my head, if I don't move the camera, but I do move left to right, we have changes in that string. If I move forward and backward, we have changes as well. So actually moving the character model around seems to change a large part of the string. Moving the camera around or moving my head around seems to move only a small part of the string. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this is the client reporting our character position to the server, right? This is very important information for us, right? Because our player position means if we can change that, we can teleport. It also means that we're getting a server acknowledgement of some kind. So the server is apparently doing something also with player position, which makes sense. It's an MMO. The server needs to know where our character is in order for us to play with other players. So this makes makes perfect sense, right? This is going to be a primary relationship between the, the client-server relationship for, for any MMO, and particularly with this one. Uh, we also note if I go higher, if I go up this hill, it changes. It's hard to tell exactly. Uh, we can't really isolate these variables because in order to move up, I also need to move side to side. But I can just jump, and that should leave all other positions. If I don't touch the mouse, if I don't touch the, the WASD keys, if I just jump, and that should isolate our up and down position. Yeah, look at that. We actually have a couple of packets that are sent when we jump. We have one that's even longer. And that is a, uh, again, a 6, that's not a 6D76. That's a 6, uh, I'm going to have to stop it here so I can see. Uh, let's go up here to one of those. Here we go. So 6D76, and then we go 6A700 something something. So this is probably a packet that says we've jumped. And then this would be the packet that reports the position, right? And we can see that changing. So interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Let's go back to this. Um, so I can tell you uh, that if we move around, what part of the, the data stream here doesn't change is that prefix. No matter where we go, what we do, no matter how erratic our movement is, 6D76 remains at the beginning. We also see what else doesn't change. We got a couple of, looks like a couple of bytes at the end. There's a double zero. Uh, oh, no, we can, we can actually, there we go. See, we can actually get, oh, what is that? Well, when we turn, sometimes we get a seven F at the end of that string, but those go away. Let's see if I can find that. There was an eight one right there. Ah, we get 8-1 when I move to the left, 7-F when I strafe to the right. If I go forward and I go backward, we don't get that. So apparently we have lateral movement. Left to right is a special suffix. Forward and back. We have the same 8-1 and 7-F, but they're not in the last two positions. They're actually, look at that. They're actually in the uh, penultimate position. So if I move forward, we get 7F. If I move backward, we get 81. So 7F00, 8100, 0081007F. So that's the, uh, the packet is sending our, let's see, our direction of movement. It knows if we're moving forward, it moves if, knows if we're moving backwards, it knows if we're moving side to side or the other direction, side to side, left or right, right? And it's sending that with the last, uh, it would be the last uh, um, uh, four byte pairs. Uh, if we jump, we get the jump packet, but we don't get any, I don't see anyway, uh, without examining deeper, any uh, special appendices to the actual movement. So let's, let's go back real quick and let's stop this again. Let's take a closer look. So we can see it. 
So 7f in these positions we know is we are moving backwards. We know, uh, let's see, 7f, here we go. 7f, 7f, the last two byte pairs are both 7f. So we know that we're moving, uh, I might get my directions mixed up here because I don't have them written down. Uh, would that be backwards and to the left? So on a diagonal. And the 6d76 doesn't change. So this prefix must be some way of identifying this type of packet. This data stream here is a movement or player position packet. That's good. That's, that's, that's good for us. Because with this, what we can do is we can actually parse this out uh, and see if we can get it in a way that is more user-friendly. Now, I've already done the legwork on this because we did it last semester. And I recall... Um, that essentially what we what we have is the prefix uh, 6d76 identifies this as a player position packet. Then uh, everything up until the last, I think it was um, eight byte pairs here, uh, is all player position along the x, y, and z, and then the camera position, so the, the um, pitch of the camera, because the camera will exist at x, y, z, and then the pitch will be dependent on its position because it's rotating around on a on an axis like this 360 degrees in every direction will also be part of that packet and last semester i actually found a lua script that we could run in wireshark that would parse this out for us so let me grab that and um i'll bring it up for you all right, this Lua script is up on Canvas, and I, I didn't write this. I found this last semester. Uh, Antonin Beaujean uh, is, uh, has uh, done a lot of work here with, with Pwn Adventure 3, um, and it has some really great stuff up there, so you know, do, do look into that if you want to. Uh, so I can't take credit for it, but it is exactly what we need in order to uh, 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 parse these, uh, these data packets that are coming from the game. So um, you can dig through it here. You can walk through it yourself, but just uh, real quick and see that there are many different packets that are associated with the game, right? So let me restart this again and get back in the game. So there's our movement positions. What happens when we fire a different kind of packet? Uh, you can see if I fire a bunch of them off here, we get these two A69 packets whenever we fire something. We switch weapons and fire that. Do a six nine packets right so we have a different packet for firing weapons um we have a different packet we notice when we jump we'll have a different packet you know anytime the client needs to report something to the servers we're going to get a different prefixed packet we can see there that there was nothing special there so there's no npc interaction that occurs on the servers um what else would do this uh spawning right if there's going to be mobs the server needs to know where those mobs are so if we find ourselves there's a bear right there we got 7073 packets uh those are going to be related to our enemy here it might be enemy position there'll be a pack Ooh, we got a green drop what's that oh, g17 again um so all of that is going to be useful information for us and we can parse this out and the script will allow us to do that so uh, we got jump packets, fast travel packets, event packets. All of these have already been identified for you. Uh, if we go through this here, let's see. Um, point three proto game server protocol uh, op codes. Uh, so where's our seven or six seven? What was it? I already forgot. Six D seven six. Six D seven six right here. We can see is update location. We saw 7073 when we found the bear. That is enemy position. We had two, uh, 2A69 is fire. That's for when we fire our weapon. Send answer, send message. So all of these are going to be uh, uh, op codes here that are identified uh, by those uh, payloads that are sent to the server. Right? Um, so we can go through individually, right? Uh, oh, and it looks like it actually sends a signal when we walk or run, which I didn't test before, but you see that. Uh, here's the movement packets. We saw 8.1, we saw 7F, right? That does correspond with our movements and our strafing right here as well, right? 
Um, we, and it gets more complicated from there, of course, because there's lots to be gained from these packets that are being sent. Uh, but what this will do is it will take these streams here and it will print it out in something that's a little bit more friendly for us to read. So let's give that a try. Let's stop this right now. Uh, go to tools, Lua. Uh, let's see. How do we do this again? It's been a little, it's been, it's been a minute console. No, that's not what we want. File. Um, references. Uh, let's see. Filter buttons, name, resolution, protocol, advanced. Um, hmm, no, I don't think this is it. Let me, uh, let me just check into this here. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, Lua plugins. Uh, actually, I think they're loaded automatically. I had to go to the Wireshark uh, documentation for this. So what I'm looking at here is uh, Wireshark.org docs, configuration files. Um, if Lua is enabled, Wireshark will try to load a file named init Lua from the user's personal configuration directory all files and all files ending with dot Lua in the global and personal plugins directory. So if we follow that link, that's going to be under app data, Wireshark plugins. So I'm going to drop that Lua script, a copy of it anyway, into that directory. App data. App data. Wireshark it is Wireshark. I don't have a plugins directory, so I'm going to create one. And I'm going to drop um, Pone 3 Lua that we, we have here. Drop that into the plugins directory. Right. Oh, yeah. That's how to do personal plugin folder, right? In the global and the personal plugins directory. All right, so we should be good. Um, it doesn't look like we need to do anything else because like if we relaunch, we'll be all right. So let's do that. I think we might have to play around with this a little bit. Put my filter back on. And let's see, do I need to do anything else here? Lua. Okay, uh, let's go to Reload Lua plugins. Uh, let's see, how do we display? It's been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, so I apologize. I haven't done this since last summer. Um, let's see. Uh, com. Edit. Where, where's the edit? Edit column. No. Edit column. Where is the what the hell? Oh, it, it's right there. Uh, let's see. TCP payload. It's not going to be here in the drop down. What we need to do is well. Let's leave the TCP payload. Actually, I want to leave this one. Uh, let's edit this. Do a custom column and what do we got here? Home three. Uh, not exactly what I wanted. Did a column. 
All right, let's look at our Lua scripture. What kind of output are we expecting here? I thought it would be pwned three. Monthly protocol. Game server protocol. Okay, but that's not our output. One three fields. Yeah, it should be. So own three dot. There we go. So it looks like it parses it all out to a protocol known as pwn three, and then uh, dot is going to be your um, fields. Uh, and let's do. Um, well, let's take a look at the script here. Um, speed status moves strafes position x position y position z so do we have a yes we do position x there we go and uh, we can actually let's edit this again and change it from info to x let's actually do x just x okay so now we have a column that shows our x position <laughs> x position um Edit no no not edit, not edit column. Let's do column preferences and let's add a Y and a Z and a couple of other interesting ones here, huh? So let's move this one up here under X. Call this one Y and this one will be a custom and it will be pwn three position Y. Let's do another one, and this one will be Z. Custom position Z. And what else do we want? Let's take a look at what we have available to us here. Custom one of three. Uh, let's see. Opcode, health, mana. Um, let's see how. What's unknown? I'll come back to that one. Uh, we don't need to know if we're running because we have our speed hack. Dir P. What's Dir P and Dir R and Dir Y? Oh, direction. Direction. Let's go to those. Here we go. Direction, roll, yaw, and pitch. Right. So that's our camera position. Which is actually useful to know. Um, actually, well, I'll show you that one later. Uh, vector X, Y, and Z, which we'll explain later when we get to teleporting. Uh, move strafe, mana health, gate element ID, target ID quantity, string PVP status, speed. Actually, speed would be nice. Uh, we'd be able to see if our run how our run hack working in action. Um, but that's okay. Um, I kind of want to throw the unknown one on just because I'm curious what what it is. I don't know. Let's let's see. Might just be a catch all for like uh, I don't know what to do with it, but I'm curious. Unk. Okay. So there we go. We're able to parse. I'm actually going to move these over here, X, so that we can see them next to our game client. Looks like the unknowns are those null packets that are being sent back, which just looks like, they just look like X to me. Because they're, they're just coming from the game client. But now if we pull up uh, our uh, Wireshark running in the background, now with it parsed, we can easily uh, see that these are just coordinates of our player position. Right? We don't have the camera position up, but we do know that there's a third person mode, which would change the camera and the player are existing in roughly the same spot. Now the camera is a good distance back from the character model, right? So in here, the camera is basically inside the model's head. Back here, it's over the model's shoulder some distance away, right? And if we move around, definitely player position parsed out, nice and easy for us to be able to see. Now, keep these in mind, because pretty soon we're going to learn to... Uh, to edit these variables and teleport so this understanding this concept process of uh, of parsing this information out and uh, and figuring out what all of these are uh very important information
And I, I think for myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the rest of these. Um, like I don't, I don't need this. So we'll get rid of source Mac. Get rid of destination Mac. Uh, I don't need the source and destination port or IPs because I, I know them. And plus, it's just going to get me in trouble later on anyway. Uh, so, oh, I can source send protocol. Uh, let's get the protocol. We'll keep length. And number and time, and I'm just gonna fill the rest of these up. Um, I'm gonna put these with uh, the rest of our phone attributes because um, uh, let's see, let's do direction. Uh, yep, uh, pitch. Shh. Um, I don't know how important um, knowing this information is going to be, but I do know that the more information I have, uh, the better off I'm going to be because it's just going to make my job easier when I'm sitting there trying to figure out how to find solutions to these problems bother anybody else that I didn't capitalize that one of the of the three uh <clears throat> what else we got uh let's see what's elid element id so when an element is loaded is that going to be an enemy or an item or something i don't know let's add it Let's add it and, and, and actually see what that one is before I'm done with this today. Because I am curious about that. Element ID. I'm trying to keep these into some kind of an order here so that I can easily see my position and such. Um, but I also want to keep them organized. Uh, let's see. We also had a vector. Yeah. Whoops. So it will be vector x. And we'll get into what vectors uh, are and how they're related to position later when we actually get to teleporting. Suffice to say, uh, for the time being, that uh, games do not merely use x, y, and z generally for player position because it's simply more complicated than that uh, when you have three vectors or three uh, variables i should say it is possible to represent that in virtual space if you think about a game like um, battleship right if you're trying to determine your enemy's position you give two coordinates a letter and a number and that's a 2d space if you add a third element, then that could represent 3D space, but uh, you also have a lot more going on in a game than just one position in the space. You also have the pitch, roll, and yaw, so uh, the position of a model represented by three uh, variables, and then you have the uh, direction of the model, which would be a fourth variable. And in addition to that, uh, you can have a uh, position represented in quaternions, which is four variables, uh, which would be essentially a an element's position relative to a distant vector. So we actually have four four things that that go into the position of uh, a sprite or model in three D space because it moves around a lot. All right. Those are our vectors. We already have unknown. <clears throat> What's TID? Target ID. Okay, that sounds interesting and apparently is related to element ID here. So let's put those together. Three TID. Target ID. Let's keep those together so that we can see what those come up with. 
three uh health and mana yeah yeah let's do that changing that to custom this would be health three mana what else you got gate what's gate gate is we have well opcode is action we'll, we'll get to opcode in a moment i don't think i'm going to do move and strafe um i think i'm good without that information what is gate add location add direction branch add vectors dissector let's search for gates logic gate. oh activate logic gates okay that's uh probably for the logic gates and um, blocky's revenge so i'm going to add it now um, but probably won't come up for a while so let's add, let's move this over here after data yeah, move up here after data and then we're also going to move this up after data before gates come on and this is going to be own re and op code so we can see what's going on all right was there anything else that i felt was important unknowns uh, i don't care so much about speed pvp status uh, let's do string i'm not sure what that's going to do but let's throw that in there three str sure what that is but we'll see um what else vector move gate quantity sure i don't know what quantity is either but i'm curious could be quantity when we do a pickup could be something else not sure and we'll leave the rest of them alone for now now we got wire shark here all right, we are going to shrink down uh, the data field because we don't really need it that much. Uh, I'm going to move opcode and drop it here after targ ID because those don't seem to update very much. Vector's not updating at all. Pitch is at a zero. Yaw roll X, Y, Z. Okay, those are all good. Oh, I got to shrink this down because for some reason the Z is mega large. Uh, okay quantity is also shrink this down so we can get it all into one screen there we go health mana string they're not really updating i don't know maybe there's a problem with the script i guess we'll find out um i need to move these around though because i can't see so well uh so we're going to move health and uh string is going to go before health Quantity is going to go over here. And we're going to shrink these down there. And there we go. Now we're all in all in one one place. All right, let's check this out. When we move around the camera, yaw, roll, pitch, those all do change. But pitch does not. I'm not sure what pitch is. Pitch might be broken. Or it's well, maybe it's not even maybe it's not even used, but we can definitely see our position. Um let's get let's see if we can uh, get a mana to trigger if i use some of that i'm at 88 now let's head back yeah see mana is this field right here and it is ticking up so it does record changes in mana but not our current mana uh, amount health apparently also updates occasionally i don't see anything here uh related to um strings or quantities or anything let's go find ourselves a bear and see if we can get an element id here or a target id so i'm gonna vector doesn't seem to be doing anything those aren't updating at all at least not just yet so i'm gonna move element and id and target id over here and i'm gonna move this over a little bit let me throw element id and target id over here so we can see a little better 
Let's find ourselves a bear and see if we can get the anything in those fields, huh? Oh, we got something in the element ID. I don't know what those numbers mean, but we do have a bear on us now. Do we have more than one bear? Is that what that signifies? Wait, where'd the bear go? What? Bear? Did the bear despawn? Oh, no, there it is. It does despawn. Whoa. So it instantiates bears when you cross a barrier, and then it despawns them if you cross... This must be like a safe zone around the town. And as soon as the bear is on to us is when okay, so that's when it that's when it identifies the element ID. We got a drop too. Let's see if we get a quantity out of it. Oh, there it is. 51 pwn coin bear skin. Let me go over here where the safe zone is. And then let's go back. And stop this and check out and see what we got. Here's the quantity column right here. We're gonna okay, here we go. So remove remove element, remove element, remove element, remove element, enemy position. Ah, oh, look at that. We can see everything. Um, so the remove element was when the uh probably the pickup update location, we see those. Enemy position, enemy position. I don't see an I don't see an instantiation for let's go to the top. Ah, see look at that. New inventory item. This is when I this is pickup item. Okay, all right, all right. So this is our item pickup. Here we have uh 51, the 51 pwn coins and the bear skin that we saw. Uh that's under the, the string, right? Bear skin coin. Here's the quantity. One bear skin, 51 coins. Awesome. This gives us so much information. I might end up doing a TCP proxy after all, because if it's just as simple as taking this string here, our data string, uh, and figuring out exactly where the value is um, represented. Um, I don't know what direction this is now that I think of it. Well, in any event, uh, this gives us so much information, so much great information about what's happening in the game and our ability to manipulate it. I, I might end up doing the, the proxy again and actually doing injection this year. Uh, but if not, even if you don't, uh, still super valuable information. Oh, you look at what we can see here, though. Uh, we have a, a 6D76, uh, um, so a player position packet. Oh, shit, I just accidentally sorted by quantity. Uh, uh, here we go. All right, so if we expand this out, update location, enemy position, enemy position, enemy position. Look what happens to our X, Y, and Z variables when we do that. They, the Z or the X rather, uh, is totally wigged out, totally wigged out when it does that. Pitch changes. We, we do have pitch updates here, but look at the value 65, 535. I think pitch is broken. That's what it looks like. Or at least the script that's parsing it might be broken. That's what that looks like to me. So, uh, might, might even be able to go in and do a little fixing up here. Uh, let's go vectors. No, it was, here we go. Might do a little bit of fixing up here. Uh, there might be some work to do as far as that goes. All right, that's that's all I got for you today. That's using Wireshark here uh, to intercept and parse uh, the uh, the game client and server data as it flies by back and forth. Um, if I do end up doing a TCP proxy, you can bet I'll do a video on that again as well. I did do one last semester, but again, the quality of those videos isn't great, so I'll do another one of those as well. And uh, if I make use of it, you can you can bet I'm going to show that too. So, uh, but this is a great way to get started. And, um, and for uh, certain objectives, knowing your position or the position of objects when they are instantiated is very important. So um, let's, uh, yeah, let's call it for today then. Thanks. See you in the next one.